So, I've had this lingering issue when it comes to making these videos. I usually carry a camera around at all times, and it usually is this camera. But sometimes I want to walk around the city or, you know, go on a trip and not have to worry about carrying around this ginormous rig. So usually then I'll just carry my phone around. I already have it on me. Makes sense. But then I end up losing space on my phone because I have a lot of photos already and then I lose battery power because I'm filming all the time. So I wanted a camera that I don't necessarily have to hold all the time. Maybe something that I can clip on my belt or something like that, put in a satchel, a side camera bag, like a small one or something like that, that isn't my phone. And that's where this comes in. <laughs> This is the Sony ZV-1. Super compact little camera. Something that you can put in like a little belt, you know, a little pouch thing. Something that I would definitely use out vlogging that is, you know, substantially better dynamic range than my phone. Not as great as dynamic range as far as like a full frame sensor. It's something of better quality that is easier to use on the go. I know that there's a new iPhone that has 48 megapixels, but I'm just like, I just want something that works for what I would need it for. And I feel like this actually answers that for me. So this is what it looks like straight out of camera. Uh, this is like the standard picture profile. This isn't using PP8 on the Sony's S-Log3, basically. Just straight out of the camera, standard mode. I think this looks really good for a small little vlog camera. This angle is not horrible. I would definitely use this. From like same distance away, this is basically like the same this is basically the same shot that you would get on this camera. A 24 millimeter length is what you would get from a full frame, is what you would get on the Sony ZV-1. So it's not super wide, it's like standard wide, but all intents and purposes, this is pretty good for me. This is what it looks like out of the camera. And then LUT applied. I think this looks really good. I'm just saying that because I know what S-Log3 looks like. Even though the Sony ZV-1 on body microphone it's actually one of the better microphones for point and shoots, especially on Sony's. So I don't know how this would sound in like a super busy area. Hey, it's oh, Bob, baby! Oh, let's go! It's an audio go. picking, baby! Let's go. We're, We're sitting vlogging. Over here. We're vlogging. We're <laughs> vlogging. But if you're in a quiet area, or put on a mic on this, like a, a video mic micro thingy, I think this is pretty good. Or put like a little lapel mic or something like that. This is kind of a nice little smaller setup. And why didn't no one tell me that I had food in my mouth? Hello, welcome to the vlog. <laughs> I just got, I just ran. Just ran eight miles. This is Josh. Training's going well. Does this have an ibis? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's see how this, how it sounds. How does this sound? <laughs> little asthma. Asthma. <laughs> I don't know if this is smart, Eric. Um, just go with it. <laughs> just trust the process, okay? Trust, uh, trust the process. I don't know if this is trust the process. I don't know if this process is trustable. <laughs> Vertically mounting a C70 on the not so trustworthy tripod. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I put this thing in the ocean, so... Did you really? No, I put the camera, oh, the camera in the ocean. In the ocean. <laughs> you saw me do it. Insert clip here. Did you get it wet? Now when it comes to this camera and actually the usability of it, it is very, very innate. It's like you don't think about it. My favorite way of using this camera, like a run and gun vlogging camera, is to close the back screen, which makes the camera shut off. And then you just open up the back screen, turn it towards you, and then you just press record. It's that simple. It's that ease of nature of using this thing that I really, really love. Also the fact that it's got a little power zoom. What camera these days still has a power zoom? It's so nice having a variable focal length. Keep in mind though that this is a one inch sensor. It's not full frame and it's not a PSC in that weird in between. It is very good as far as using it as a B cam in some scenarios, even an A cam, but it's not the greatest at low light. It's pretty decent. You will get some noise with this camera in like the lower light areas and the shadows. I do have to say this is a nice medium 
in comparison to my iPhone 12 Pro, yes, I didn't get the new one. I'm cheap, I'm broke. It's either a new phone or a decent, better camera that I could just put on a belt pouch. This is a little bit better to me. And then I save battery power on my phone. I don't know, that's just my thinking about it. In my opinion, it's better than the recent cameras. I don't know about the new iPhone 14. Bean just got one and it is pretty decent as far as dynamic range goes. And the mic's actually pretty good. So it's actually, I don't know. It actually might be a comparison between the iPhone 14 and, and the Sony ZV-1. Maybe I'll figure that out later. But for me and my uses, I'm leaning towards this as my secondary vlogging camera, my B camera, because of the various things you can do with it. This particular camera has a feature that I think would be really good for like a B camera slash overhead camera because it has a product autofocus mode. It is exactly what it sounds like. Full frame cameras like this, autofocus is based on either face or eye detection. So when you try to show something, it's not gonna focus on the product unless I cover my face, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but but on the ZV-1, if I want to show a product, it's going to focus really snappy on the product I want to show. Without having to cover my face, at least 99% of the time, it's going to autofocus to the product and not your face when it comes to this particular mode on this camera. You know on the iPhone you have like this portrait mode? On this camera, you have a literal defocus mode. So right now I'm at F9, which means most things are closer to being in focus from in front of the camera and then behind me. But with a click of a button, I could blur it out with a 1.8 aperture. That, power zoom, that is pretty freaking fantastic. Another great thing that you can get with this camera that you can't get it on an iPhone is a built-in ND filter. I'm not exactly sure of what spec that is, but it is one setting of adding ND. ND filters are just sunglasses for your camera, so the highlights aren't blown out and the shadows can be moved around a bit. That's basically what it is. It makes everything more clear of what you're looking at. Now in using this camera, I found out a couple of things that I just don't particularly like. It's not the end of the world, it's just odd. When it comes to ports on this camera, cameras usually have ports on the left side of the body. This one's on the right side of the body. You got your mic jack, your USB jack, and then the micro HD. The body is kind of plasticky. It does have a little bit of a cheap feel, but it does have this kind of weight to it. Like it gives me comfort that it's not some cheap little point and shoot. Like it, it is a really good 4K point and shoot. I haven't had any issues overheating with it. Now, if you're thinking about getting this camera, one thing I do want you to know is that the battery life isn't that long. It's not horribly short. You can get, I think around I don't know, half hour, hour, if you're vlogging sporadically. I think at minimum, if I were to get this camera, I would have at least two extra batteries and like a little charger that can plug in the wall somewhere and just throw it in my bag. The microphone on this is pretty dang good. I mean, in my experience, one of the best on-body microphones on any camera, not just point shoots, on any camera. Uh, but it does come with a little cold shoe mount with a little dead cat adapter. This is actually a hot shoe. You can connect things electronically to it. I think for most people, honestly, even me, this little package is all that I would need. Honestly, I would be very comfortable going out and vlogging with just this. It gives me peace of mind that the quality I know I'm gonna get is gonna be better than my phone with this. That's my little short review of the Sony ZV-1. I also got Steven, a very prominent Canon shooter, to possibly transition into Sony just for this camera. I'm, just, I'm recording this for posterity right now, but I think Josh may have convinced me to get my first Sony camera. Wait, you know what? That's actually not true. My first ever camera was a Sony. Really? Hi. First point and shoot ever. Gene, come here. Hi! Josh is renting this. You're renting it? Mm -hmm. Cool. I think I might want to get one now. Okay, well, really cool. oh, there's a record light on the front, too. So you always know. That's so annoying how good it looks. <laughs> what the heck? Because it's, it's not APS-C, is it? It's just like a one-inch sensor yeah, in there. One. It looks really good. <laughs> it's, really good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah, no, my first ever, so, like, first ever, like, camera that I bought for myself was when I was in seventh grade, and I got a, sorry, eighth grade, and I got a Sony CyberShot. It was like a little, oh. like, 12 megapixel, like, you know, 28 to 200 yeah. digital, like, you know, zoom, the thing came out that far, like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe Sony point and shoots are the thing for me. They keep trying to get me in the Canon. I guess now I just gotta get them in a Sony.
I think a lot of people can find a lot of use for this. I'm really, I'm gonna buy this camera. Or do I wanna get the Insta360? 